What is the scariest or creepiest thing you have seen or heard? Part 1. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel, Thread Tonic. Account 1. I was on vacation in Ithaca with my boyfriend at the time. We had literally, I'm talking 10 minutes, just gotten into town and stopped at a suspension bridge near Cornell's campus. I'm terrified of heights, and so my boyfriend was coaxing me step by step over the bridge. It was gorgeous, and we stopped at the middle to take a picture. On the side we had come from, there was a parking lot with steps leading to the bottom of the gorge, but on the far side there were hiking paths with no barrier. A woman walked past us and offered to take a picture for us. We declined, and she smiled and walked quickly to the far side of the bridge, where she smoothly jumped off into the gorge. There was not a second of hesitation. It was almost like she expected the path to keep going. The sound of a person hitting the ground from a jump like that sticks with you. Account 2. A group of friends was staying at this remote cabin that one of my friend's cousins owned. There were no roads leading to the cabin, and it was a good three, four day hike from where you parked the cars. I couldn't go at the same time as everyone else due to work obligations, so I decided to head up the same day but later. It would mean I would have to camp for a night by myself, though. The latter part of the trail is too dangerous to be taken at night, especially by someone who doesn't know it. I didn't care, I was kind of looking forward to it as I've never camped alone before. So I was in the middle of these woods when the sun went down. I got my camp set up in this small clearing, probably 40 feet across. Get my campfire going and pitch my small one-person tent. Do all that camping stuff like cooking hot dogs on a stick over the fire and s'mores. I probably stay up for a good two or three hours after dark. It was mid-autumn, so the days were somewhat short. The entire time, I thought I heard shit moving in the woods on the edge of the clearing. I didn't think anything of it at first because the woods are full of animals, but as the night went on, I realized that whatever it was was just circling the clearing over and over. Once I started paying attention, it made four or five laps around before I decided to get up and investigate. The noise stopped as soon as I stooped up, and I thought I heard some sounded going away through the woods. I just shrug it off thinking it was some fox that was curious that got scared when I stood up. I decide it's time to sleep, douse the fire, and climb into my tent. I start to doze off and stay in that half-asleep, half-awake state for a while. I normally hear weird shit when I'm in this state, so I don't think much of it when I hear a voice. Something wakes me all the way up, though, and I realize the voice is real and right outside my tent. It's just above a whisper, and I'm not sure if it was another language or if they were just speaking English in such a way that I couldn't understand. I lay there for some time, I don't know how long, listening and waiting for something to happen. There is just enough moonlight to light up the walls of the tent, so I can see when a hand presses into the wall of my tent down near my foot. This freaks me out, and I sit up quickly. Whoever was outside of the tent tore ass out of there, like running full sprint through the woods. I get out of the tent and shine my flashlight around and see nothing. I was expecting there to be a bloody handprint on the tent, but nope. Didn't sleep that night. Packed up camp at first light that morning and booked it to the cabin. Account 3. I was about 15 minutes from finishing the night shift at work when there was a massive crash on one of the windows in the office, so I get up and go to check it out. Someone has thrown quite a sizable rock through one of the windows on the front of the building. This is made especially weird because I'm working in the industrial district at 11.30 at night with none of the other businesses open. I go back to my desk, put a quick call through to security to let them know and decide to head home. As I'm leaving the building, I'm freaking myself out about it more and more and end up running to my car, getting in and taking off. I'm almost home and I've started to calm down a bit when I realize that I didn't unlock my car when I got in. It had been unlocked the whole time. I do a quick check with my hand in the back seat for any possible murderers that might be hanging around there, but there's nothing there. Fast forward 30 minutes. I've called a friend of mine who says he is out drinking, so I decide I'm going to join him. I jump on my bicycle and start riding over. I'm doodling along the road on my bike. It's a nice night and I'm in no big rush, just enjoying the moonlight when I hear someone riding behind me. I straighten up and stick to one side of the road. He passes me really slowly, and when he is right beside me, he shoots me a smile I can describe as purely fucking insane. I kind of flinch and am taken aback as he rides on. That's when I realize he is riding my mom's bike. Needless to say, I sprint the fuck home. When I get there, sure enough, her bike is missing and one of my car's doors is open. The back left one. I was driving and had no need to open that door. Account 4. I was playing around with a radio once when I was a kid, just slowly spanning through the static trying to find a station. 
I had found an old television antenna, attached it to the side of our house, and ran a wire out my window to it with an alligator clip attached to the radio antenna, allowing me to get a way broader range of signals. So I'm sitting there early in the morning, like 2 a.m., slowly sweeping frequencies, and suddenly I get to this station that's playing this very weird crackling sound. It sounded sort of like cracking knuckles or maybe Rice Krispier cereal, but with a fixed rhythmic pattern instead of being random. I sat there listening to it for a second, then it suddenly stopped and this faint voice says, it doesn't work. We're already dead. We're already dead. It took a second for the weight of the words to hit me, but when they did, I freaked the fuck out and almost threw the radio across the room. I'm pretty sure it was just someone messing around with a radio transmitter, but damn if it didn't scare the shit out of me at the time. Account 5. I have a similar story. At university, in my room in halls, it was just me and stuff. Every night after I moved in, I heard voices. Not through the wall voices, but hushed in the room voices that I'd become aware of as I lay just below the threshold of sleep. These voices would be talking quite leisurely in low tones, and it always seemed like as soon as I jerked awake, they'd quickly hush themselves to a barely audible whisper that I couldn't chase around the room because it just hung in the air. I owned no radio. My laptop was shut down and unplugged. The halls had no PA system or anything. Just the voices that were talking about things in some strange language, getting louder as I fell asleep and quieter when I woke up. Turns out that the cables on my speakers weren't properly isolated, and I was picking up French radio. Only happened at night because that was when I turned them off. When there was current flowing, they didn't act as a radio receiver. Account 6. Went to see The Sixth Sense when it first came out with my wife. Had just moved into our new house, and my wife was pretty shaky when we came home. We didn't have kids at this point. She insisted that I go through all of the rooms in the house to check for... Who knows what? Being a dutiful husband, I eye-rolling went through all of the bedrooms and was finishing up in the guest bathroom. The door was ajar and I pushed it open and heard right next to my head the loudest, most blood-curdling scream ever. Turns out that the cat was behind the door and somehow had its tail in the jam, and when I opened it, it got pinched. Account 7. Something similar happened to me when I saw the Blair Witch Project. Came home and woke up in the middle of the night with all the hangings of the walls going back and forth, bed shaking. I fucking shat myself. It was an earthquake. Account 8. My parents bought their first house back in 1972. It was a fixer-upper, but they decided to move in right away and fix things as time money permitted. Within a few days of moving in, the new neighbors came over to introduce themselves. They also let my parents know that the previous owners had moved out after a nasty divorce. They had lost their second baby from SIDS, and their relationship went downhill from there. My parents were horrified, more so because they were newly pregnant and couldn't imagine going through such a thing. They eventually pretty much forgot all about it. Life went on. They were in love with their new life and their new house. In preparation for the baby, they decided to wallpaper the nursery. Now, my dad told my mom there was no need in wallpapering the inside of the closet, but she insisted. She was kneeling down, scraping off old paint inside of the closet, when her eyes fell upon something that made her blood turn to ice. Written in crayon, at about eye level for a kindergartner, in childish scrawl was, I killed the baby. Account 9. OMG, this reminds me of this chilling confession that I heard on This American Life, I think. It has always stuck with me, it's so sad. It was this man calling in confession line to admit that in the 60s he accidentally killed his baby sister, and his parents never knew the truth and thought it was SIDS, Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. He said he was covered her mouth with a bag, just playing a game and laughing because he liked it when she turned blue. He didn't know he was hurting her. Finally, he did it too long. He was just wrecked about it and said he could never admit it to his parents, but he wished they knew. Account 10. The story of Karen Wetterhahn. Essentially, she was a chemistry professor at Dartmouth. She was working with an organic mercury compound that was relatively unknown at the time. A drop spilled on her gloved hand. No big deal, usually. Turns out dimethylmercury penetrates latex gloves really quickly, and a drop on the hand is a death sentence. She slipped into a coma about six months later and then died. The really terrifying part is the description of her coma from Wikipedia. One of her former students described it as not being the kind of coma I'd expected. She was thrashing about. Her husband saw tears rolling down her face. I asked if she was in pain. The doctor said it didn't appear that her brain could even register pain. Fucking terrifying. 
I am so glad I'm not a chemist. Computers are friendly. Account 11. About a year ago, I was climbing a tree in my front yard at around 4.30 a.m. I had walked a lady friend to her car and was killing time until I got the I'm home text, and the weather was nice for tree climbing, so I just did it. This particular night, my neighbors didn't lock their gate like they normally do, leaving easy access to their tool shed, lawnmower, etc. I guess the guy forgot. It happens, but it was definitely noticeable. Large gate right next to the road, expensive old man tools. So as I observed the gate from my lofty perch and considered all of the reasons it would be open, I noticed a car coming down my street very slowly, eventually coming to a halt right in front of my neighbor's driveway. I looked into the car and saw two young men pointing and looking intently around his yard. Sketchy shit during daylight, much more so at night. After a minute or so of being too nervous to do anything at all, I realized I was leaning pretty heavy on some branches, exposing myself more than when these two had just driven up. That was when it happened. The guy in the passenger seat noticed me first. He did a panicky sort of double take when he first saw me, followed by what I generally assumed to be the words, oh shit, and rapidly punching the driver in the arm. Attempting to look menacing, I did the only thing I could think of, which was hold my arms up in a claw like pose, like a tree rex. When the driver saw me, he did the same panicky double take before slamming the gas and hauling ass out of Dodge. I like to think I was the creepiest, scariest thing those two ever saw. Account 12. Well, I'll never forget this one. My wife and I used to live in a townhome that backed to some woods. We both took off work one day to get some things done in the yard, cutting the grass, weeding our large flower beds, laying mulch, etc. Our yard wasn't big. It took about two full grass clipping bags. I would walk a couple of feet into the woods and dump them in a pile. As I'm walking back to empty the second bag, something in the middle of the woods catches my eye. Something out of place and it's moving. I crouched down to get a better look and I just froze. At first, I could make out a pair of shoes just swaying back and forth and then was able to see the legs and body of a teenager. There in the middle of the woods was a teenage boy who had hung himself. Next to the tree, I could see a skateboard leaning up against it. I yelled for my wife to call the police and started running back to try and save him, but he was gone. His body was limp and his head was, was just slumped over. His dark, scruffy hair was slowly blowing in the breeze. The cops came and quickly cut him down and they were gone. As it turns out, he was having problems getting along with his parents and this is what he decided to do. Account 13. One night after drinking and smoking at a pond near an elementary school, my friends decided to take a shortcut through the field and basketball court like they normally do. As they cross the field, they see some dude just standing around the basketball goal, not moving or anything. My friends thought this was kind of weird and tried whistling and calling out to get the guy's attention. No luck. As they reach the court, they realize the kid was hanging just right off the ground. They run to my friend's house, which is right by the court exit, and call the cops. Turns up, the kid got in a fight with his mom over a cell phone and got kicked out of the house. He was homeless for a few days and slept on the school benches. I didn't personally know him, but he was a year younger than us, and we all went to that elementary school and high school. Account 14. This was a few years ago on a night scuba dive. There were eight of us in the group, including our dive master and his assistant. We had just finished our dive and were gathered up in a circle ready to ascend and get out of the water when my dive master freezes. He takes his flashlight and pointing it outside our circle of divers, he catches something circling us with the beam. Turns out it was a 12-foot-long great white shark. At this point, half of the group are trying to keep the shark illuminated as it circles us and remarkably everyone stayed calm. The only things going through my mind were iterations of these two thoughts. Don't look like a yummy, delicious, fatty seal and that I hope I taste terrible. My dive master gets our attention and slowly puts his thumb up and then makes an upward motion. We all begin to ascend and the shark kept with us until we were maybe 10 feet from the surface. Then it turned off into the darkness and was gone. I did not go back into the ocean for about a week after that. Account 15. Not creepy, but this is as scared as I've even been. I was fixing a jumped belt on an old Gleaner K2 in the middle of the field, in the middle of the night. When my dog, a 110 will be his lab, who's usually sniffing for birds when I stop, is standing still and letting out a growl I've never heard from him. I shine my almost dead flashlight where he's looking, and I see three sets of eyes change quickly from a glow to a silhouette to coyotes. They're pretty harmless on their own, but in a pack they're relentless. 
I call for my dog and bolt for the cab, but he runs at them instead. I stood on the platform for what felt like hours as my dog tried to fight off the now five coyotes. I couldn't let my buddy die, so I grabbed the hammer and wrapped my jacket around my arm. The second I got close, one of them went for my leg and I offered my arm instead, which it gladly took and I swung down on its back with all my might. Second coyote, same as the first, grabs my arm and I swing at his back. The other three are switching between fighting and dragging my dog into the corn, and like an idiot I throw the hammer at the pack with no effect. Take the one doing the most dragging and he thankfully runs off. I picked up the hammer and swing at the one my dog doesn't have and stood back and watched my dog chase off the fifth. He came back bloody and limping, but no worse for wear. But even with the rabies shot, he started showing symptoms about a week later. Toughest thing I had to do to date was putting that dog down.